In this video, we're going to be talking about alternate access mappings and IIS headers for SharePoint 2013. Now, the screen we see here is one we see a lot in software support. And I've gone ahead and turned off the friendly error messages in the web config files um, for SharePoint. Otherwise, we would just see the generic and unexpected error has occurred here. And so it says server error in application, object reference not set to an instance of an object. So even with the friendly error messages turned off, we still don't get a whole lot to go on here. So what I want to show you now is an alternate access mapping screen. And as we can see here, I filtered it on, on our web application, SharePoint 80. We have an internal URL of SharePoint 1. And then we've added another alternate access mapping for the extranet in this case, called extranet.sps.com. And so we see this scenario a lot when people already have an existing web application that they want to open up as an extranet to the outside world. Uh, the common sense approach would just to be to come in here, add another alternate access mapping for a different zone in this case. And so we would pick extranet since that's what we're going to use it for. So we add it here and then we go over to IIS Manager. We choose it, select bindings, and we enter the host name here. So it seems like it should work, but yet when we try it, we get this error. So I want to explain to you why we get this error and then how we can work around it. First of all, the important thing to keep in mind about alternate access mappings is that each public URL, so if we go to the screen here, each of these public URLs must match up with a zone for your web application. So if we look over here at Web Application Management, I go to SharePoint 80 and go to Authentication Providers. I see that I only have one zone defined here, and that's default. And I've got both Windows and FBA enabled on that. So the reason that we're getting the error is because there is no extranet zone that exists. Now some of the confusion comes from the 2007 world where you could not do two forms of authentication on a single IIS site. You had to actually extend an existing web app, create another IIS site, and then you use one for your external users and one for your internal. With the introduction of claims authentication in SharePoint 2010, that was no longer necessary. You could do both Windows and FBA to a single IIS site. So some of the confusion comes from that. And then again, it's just kind of intuitive to add a URL for the extranet site that you've uh, created that you want to open up to the outside world. So we're getting this error because there is no extranet zone that exists on the web app. And so when we try to resolve this, there's no zone for SharePoint to actually go to. So how do we work around this? Well, there's a couple of things that we can do. If I go back. I can basically make the default URL extranet.sps.com. So let me just copy this, paste that there, and we'll delete it from down here. Go ahead and click Save. And now we can see I have an internal URL that matches up to the public URL. However, what if we still had some applications that needed the NetBIOS name, the SharePoint one? How do we get that to work correctly? Well, we can add an internal URL here. For that, we're just going to do HTTP SharePoint 1. And again, we only have the one, zone, the one zone here. So even though it allows us to choose from multiple ones in the drop-down menu, our web application itself only has the one default zone. So if I save that, Okay, we can now say we have two internal URLs basically, extranet.sps.com and SharePoint 1, that both point to a public URL of extranet.sps.com. So what this is going to do, and they're both on the, on the default zone, which is very important. So basically any request for SharePoint 1 is actually going to do a redirect to extranet.sps.com. So this is kind of the recommended way to set up SharePoint 2013 and, and 2010 before that. You know, you have one site for both sets of users, internal and external. It makes link sharing a lot easier, and there's a lot less confusion about which site someone has to go to. So in this case, if you had some users that came from 2007, or even if you're doing this in 2010, they were just used to typing in SharePoint 1 rather than the full URL, they can still type that, and they'll just get redirected over here. So now let's go back and refresh our page. And you can see in the URL extranet.sps.com. 
And now we see the page that we expect to sign in page. So now let's test the internal URL that we added, just SharePoint 1. And now it redirects us up here to extranet.sps.com and we'll get the sign in page here as well. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of why that error occurs and how you should set up your author and access mappings, your zones, and your host headers in SharePoint 2013. Now I do want to mention the probably the most common scenario that we see this in is when someone actually changes from HTTP to a secure URL. So in that case you have to obviously go into IIS, add your secure, um, <clears throat> your secure binding here, but you also have to go and change your public URL to reflect the S as well. So that needs to be yes, but you can also have the internal URL point to HTTPS, and it should be very seamless for your users. Additionally, you can add another internal URL with just this address, just the HTTP, and it will also redirect to the HTTPS. So you basically have three internal URLs, the uh, HTTPS, the HTTP, and then the SharePoint one that would all go to the secure site. So in summary, the important thing to remember is just that each authoritarian access mapping, each zone or edit or public URL you pick here must have a corresponding zone in the web app itself. So in this case we just have the one default zone. So all of our alternate access mappings must be applied to this one zone here. As you can see that's what we have. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.